Hello again, Gemini Didici here. I'm back. Uh, a lot healthier this month, I'm pleased to say. I uh, had a rather difficult uh, time with COVID, as a lot of you know. For those of you that are new, welcome. Excuse my cough. It's what they call call a post-COVID dry cough. I'm trying to deal with it, but uh, <clears throat> it might be a little bit irritating. I'll do my best to suppress it and uh, start the ball rolling here with uh, your forecast, which this month um, is a very important one because this sixth house, Scorpio, and your twelfth house, Taurus, are going to relate to your uh, your working environment, your health, uh, your debts, and also here the very deeper spiritual part of your nature. And I want to start that off <coughs> in its animation, so we can just have a look. I'm only going to look at some of the main aspects here. Uh, which will punctuate the uh, punctuate the month and show you the important transits. Uh, by far, the two most important ones this month are going to be the new moon here in your sixth house, uh, which takes place on the 5th. And that's why I mentioned this area, which has to do with co-workers and the work environment, and that very impulsive um, conjunction to Mars, opposition to Uranus just before the new moon on the 5th, right there. And so this is a new way of dealing with people, dealing with your debts, also dealing with your health. This can be uh, that you know, that new resolution. It's not a New Year's resolution. It may be a uh, recommencement of a resolution that you'd broken. But in any case, it's a way to make your health improve. There you'll notice also Venus moving into the 8th house. It rules the 12th house. So Venus moving in the 8th is very, very good for your finances. 12th ruler in the 8th is a, uh, a good material um, aspect. It's not particularly good for children or lovers, so there might be a, a different sort of stage starting with your relationships. One in which you may think now, mm, I've been a little bit superficial with my relationship. I want to find out a little bit more about them. My kids, I've been dealing with them in a superficial way. Let me find out more about them. That's because this eighth house has a lot to do with the way you, you know, you psychologically analyze the thing that's ruled by. The eighth house is the house of transformation, deeper psychological issues. Have a look up here too. I think there's a couple of other aspects that I'm missing here, uh, which I need to get on top of as we're going through your reading here. Uh, we've mentioned the new moon, and then uh, let's have a look here. Mercury, the sun, we've got Venus there. Moon is a fast-moving body. Sometimes people ask me, Dorici, why aren't you looking at all of these aspects? Look, yeah, certainly the moon can impact you, but it's such a quick-moving body. I look more to the outer planets, and then, of course, Venus and Mars to see what they're doing. And here we see the approach to this <coughs> full moon eclipse on the 19th <coughs> it's going to make this conjunction to uranus that's going to disrupt the mental energies has to do with your finances as well then it enters into the opposition of mars mercury and that e eclipse phase on the 19th there it is just in view of this north node which is your karmic uh, planet and you notice that that's going to be moving out soon so these Elements are very strong in terms of your spirituality. That e eclipse taking place in your 12th house really brings... I'm going to put that on hold for a moment. That really brings up a lot to do with your past. The 12th house has to do with secrets and all of those things that we'd prefer to just sweep under the rug. You know, those eclipse energies are so powerful that it's very, very difficult to avoid that. So when this Uranus conjunction that I mentioned there on the 18th is triggered, there may be an almost sudden and unexpected push inward. Inward by that I mean inward into yourself to analyze these things. It could be a phone call, it could be just some trigger mechanism that causes you, forces you in fact, to go back through time and analyze what, <clears throat> what it was that's made you who you are and what you can do now to release yourself from a lot of that negative energy. A lot of us carry so much of that shit around 
that emotional baggage. And that's what that is, along with the 12th house and to a lesser extent the 4th house. Although the 4th house is the, uh, the area that has to do with our genetics, our um, maternal lineage, the family, that type of thing. So that's also tied in. And these three houses are connected. So when this eclipse takes place, you notice also that Mercury, which rules your fourth house of family, is also involved in that eclipse being very, very close to the sun. And the north node, which is the future karma, south node here, having been transiting the last 18 months or so through your relationships area, a lot of lessons have been learned there. And this eclipse, I think, is going to be the <coughs> cherry on the top of the cake. So let's have a look at the uh, final eclipse. I've left out a couple. There's a nice aspect there from Mars on the 30th, which trines Neptune. It gives you more drive here. Again, focused in your sixth house of work. Your vision for career with Neptune here still retrograde. All of these other outer planets have gone direct, which is good. But uh, Neptune still retrograde, showing that you're reevaluating some of the career aspects of your life. <coughs> while, <coughs> pardon me, while Neptune is in that retro movement, <coughs> Mars means you're pushing to get something happening there. You've probably got an idea of what you want, but Neptune's not allowing that just now. So you've got to be a little bit more patient. And when Neptune finally goes direct, I'll be letting you know that, by the way. Uh, you'll be in a better position to make your dreams come true. Um, that's about it, really. If you want to get more information on what's happening, go over to the website. We've got the links here. You'll see the transcript for this. You'll also see the aspects day by day, every few days. And that's going to help you put together the larger picture of what's happening for you in November 2021. Uh, there's lots of free readings over there. You can drop me a line. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, it's always great having your company. And I look forward to it again next month. Stay safe. Bye-bye now.